I was very angry and I wanted to be amused by it all. And I was, f uh, there was kind of the absurdity of the whole thing. In my eyes, the, the total absurdity of the man. I had never seen anybody, it seemed to me, quite so absurd. Um, and, and, then, and then you realise, well, you know, you can't, the absurdity is only going to take you so far. This is somebody that wields enormous power. So then there's rage. So I was trying to, how do you balance? How do you balance the rage and the sense of comedy? And you feel it differently every day. You feel it differently within an hour. So I had to come up with some tale that enabled, some way of telling it that enabled me to be, to be funny and not funny and furious and the rest of it. So it had to be some sort of fairy tale, bother, borrowing all sorts of forms of satire and, and like a cartoon. And you describe this leader who is imbecilic or absurd in your words, yet he is the product of a democratic system that has lasted, what, 300 years or more. Do you not feel that you're railing against the wrong thing here? He is a product of a system that's lasted a long time and he might la last a long time and everything might be well. Excellent, I hope so, for us all. Do you think that democracy got this wrong then? Democracy was wrong. Between ourselves, if nobody is listening, I'd like to say that democracy gets a hell of a lot wrong. Part of my, part, part of my anger in writing this book was uh, fueled by, fueled by Brexit. I was starting to hear all that stuff any time anytime anybody looked back about Brexit and didn't like what they'd seen, they were a Bremona, there was all that bitterness stuff, that get over it stuff, as though you were obliged to get over it. And you cannot deny the will of the people. Well, that's not true, you can deny the will of the people. And indeed, if you believe that the will of the people has taken you into a disastrous situation, it's, it's your positive duty to say so. But we had this fantasy going on, the people have spoken and that's it forever. But the people speak whenever there's a general election and they change their mind. And if democracy is to work, the people have to, have to be given the opportunity to change their mind. Are you suggesting that the people shouldn't have voted that way because they didn't know what they were doing? I'm suggesting that I think that they voted the wrong way. I'm suggesting that I think that they were ill-informed and misinformed. And I'm also, I'm, all, I, I'm also highly conscious of the fact that you're not allowed to be rude to the people. You can't, they are a sacred entity. People are sacrosanct. Well, nothing should be sacrosanct. And I think if you were voted for Donald Trump, I don't care what your reasoning is, to have voted for a man offering such a meagre, meagre view of the world with so, view, so few words to describe the world or to imagine the world, a man imprisoned in this minuscule vocabulary, because if you've got no vocabulary, you've got no thoughts, to have voted for such a person is deplorable. Some people watching this will say, wow, he's fallen into that classic liberal trap. They only like democracy when their people win. They only like tolerance and decency when it's their kind of tolerance. Democracy works best when I think the people, the demos, are, right, are making the right decisions. What's wrong with that? Is it the language question that offends you most? And is that because you're a writer or because you think that lies at the heart of civilization? I think it lies at the heart of civilization. And I want to be clear that what I'm not, what I'm, com I'm not complaining that Trump is not an orator or a poet, that he doesn't speak beautifully. That's not the issue. The issue is how words free one into thought and how language frees one out of prejudice and bias and a narrowness of viewpoint that's no good for anybody to be, to, to, to be, to be locked in. This isn't someone from a university complaining about the fact that, that Trump doesn't speak like a university lecturer. But, it, but do you remember he once said, I think it was at a, an, at a Nevada rally. I love I uneducated love people. Now, it didn't mean, I, I, even though you're not educated, I love you. And what I will then try to do in my years as president is educate you. He loved the state of uneducatedness. Why? Because at the moment, it's part of the way populism is going at the moment, that you turn the people, that you make the people love themselves for not having this horrible thing that the enemy has, which is an education. And what's, if, if you turn the people against the very idea of education, you're not giving them anything. You're taking something from them because education is their right. What happens if this turns out to be an incredibly successful presidency? If everything that you think now is proved wrong and actually, you know, he makes a good fist of it? He can't. He can't. It's not possible. They I'll... said that about Reagan. He can't. 
That's all I say. And if it does, well, then I'll have to, I'll have, to have a little think again.